Hey, how's going? Who's going? No, I mean, how's going? But going where? You know, as in, how are you? How's going? Oh, you mean, how's it going? Isn't that what I said? Almost. I'll make you a video lesson. Legend. Ta. G'day you guys, welcome to this episode of Aussie English. This is the number one place to learn Australian English and I am your host, Pete. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe, like and share this with someone who you think may benefit from learning a bit of Australian. Don't forget to hang around to the end of this episode as I have a little surprise for you and my number one tip for learning to speak English like an Australian with an Aussie accent. All right, without any further ado, Let's get into it. So, needless to say, there are many, many different ways of saying hello, of greeting someone in English. Australia is a little bit unique because it has quite a few variants and they change because of our pronunciation. One of the most classic ones that I'm sure you know of is g'day. And in fact, I've done a video on this, breaking this down that you can go and check out by just clicking above here. In that episode, I showed you the combination, that one-two combo of g'day, how's it going? What a classic Aussie greeting. But there are some things that ESL learners get wrong when pronouncing how's it going. So I thought today I'll break down that greeting expression. Hey Nathan. Hey Ruby. How's it going? Good. I've got a great idea. Hey, how's it going? Nat here with another BTN news break. G'day guys. I'm General Pete and I speak with a general Australian accent. How's it going? So, before I break it down step by step and we talk about the pronunciation and what's going on inside this phrase so that you can then learn to say this like an Australian, let me cover a few errors first, okay? So, number one, not contracting the phrase, how is it going? Ugh, it's just too long, right? How is it going? And it doesn't sound natural. Because as you'll know in English, not just Australian English, when speaking, we often contract a lot of these smaller words like pronouns and auxiliary verbs so that we can get the message across faster. So, mistake number one is not contracting the phrase, how is it going? Mistake number two, only contracting part of the phrase. And that is the, the word, the auxiliary verb is, how's it going? Now, I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing this. But again, I would go further than that. I would contract this even more, okay? So, mistake number two, not contracting going as well as the word is. How's it going? Mm -mm -mm. Number three, and man, this is common with Brazilians and French people. Those are two languages, Portuguese and French that I've learnt and I've had a lot of interactions with these people trading for lessons. And quite often when we start the lesson, if we're doing an English lesson, they'll say, how's going. How's going? So, they've left out a certain word there in the middle. How's going? And that was the joke I made at the start. Who's going? Going where? How's going? How's it going? We need to have that little it in there. So, the correct version, you've guessed it, is how's it going? How's it going? And we'll do this really fast. Let's just do it five times before we break it down. How's it going? How's it going? How's it going? Hey, how's it going? How's it going? Good work. Okay, let's go through this step by step. The very first thing is contracting is onto the word how. So, we obviously do this as how is, how is, how's, how's. So, it's a Z sound, how's. How's. Don't let that S trick you, right? The S in the word is, is a Z sound. How's. How's. So, you don't want it to sound like house. House. How's. How's. The second one, the word it is actually contracted or reduced in this sense, reduced with now using a schwa sound, right? So, instead of hearing it with that I short vowel sound in Australian English, instead, you're going to hear uh, as like a uh, 
it? How's it? How's it? It. How's it? How's it? It's almost like one word. How's it? How's it? And remember in that video, the good day video that we broke down, we talked about how the word good at the start of the phrase good day, which is contracted down to good a that first vowel is also reduced and made into a schwa, right? That er sound that you'll hear in words like above or banana or potato, er. So let's practice quickly what we've just learnt. We'll say how's it three times, okay? Let's do it. How's it? How's it? How's it? Good work. Let's keep going. Now, the other interesting thing here that you may have noticed is that there is no hard T, 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 t sound being pronounced at the end of the word it, or the contracted version of it, the reduced version of it, it. Uh, now, this is because T is a stop consonant in English, and in this case, it's not being released. Effectively, that just means the tongue goes into that T position where it touches the roof of the mouth and it stops the airflow. How's it? And then we don't release the air after that. So the tongue just stays there. How's it? How's it? How's it? Now, I'm going to add another layer of complexity here, and this is one of those moments. I realized whilst making this, this lesson that because that T in it is before a G sound in going, right? How's it going? I'm actually stopping that T sound with the back of my tongue as if I was going to make a K or a G sound. Right, so the shortcut that my mouth is taking here is instead of saying how's it, where the tongue has gone into a T position, it's actually as if I'm saying ek, like ek, without releasing it. So it sounds like how's it, how's it, how's it, how's it going, how's it going, how's it going, how's it going, crazy. The stuff that you learn. So stop that T using a K or G position with your tongue. Hopefully that makes sense. So it's the back of your tongue touching the roof of your mouth as if you were about to say the word going, but you stop beforehand. Okay, let's say it three times. How's it? How's it? How's it? Another way of practicing it if you're having trouble is just releasing it with a K sound. How's it? How's it? And then stopping that and then going into the word going. But we'll do that in a sec. All right, lastly, let's break down the word going and what's happening here. We're not saying going, we're saying going, going. So firstly, we have the G sound there, g, g, g. We then have the Australian O. O sound. So, I'll leave a link up here if you want to check out the Aussie English O sound. This is a very unique diphthong that is used in Australian English. If you nail this, it is one of the most important vowels for sounding like an Aussie. I always hear students getting this right and it's like a really cool shock to hear them say O, O. And it's different from the American one which is further back in the mouth and sounds more like O. O, oh, okay. Australian one, O. Oh. American one, O. Oh. So that's the vowel in going, okay? And then we also have an I vowel sound before the NG or that ng sound. Go wing, go wing, linked with a W sound. Go wing, go wing. But when we contract this down, we actually get a schwa sound and then an N sound instead of the ING. So you're going to get go one, go one, go one, go one instead of go wing. Okay, mind blowing, right? And so you'll also have noticed that that ng sound, that ng ng sound, go wing, has been contracted into an n sound. Go one, go one instead of go wing. You can't really say it with a schwa. Go wing, go wing. That would never happen in English. Go one the contracted version of go wing. All right, now let's say the whole lot five times, okay? Listen and repeat after me, practice your pronunciation. Let's do it. How's it going? 
How's it going? How's it going? Two times fast. How's it going? How's it going? Great work, guys. And now to take it up another level, just remember that you can add in other greetings at the front here, right? Like, hey, how's it going? Or g'day, how's it going? Or hi, how's it going? So if you want to sound really natural, nail that how's it going? And if you want to sound really Australian, get the g'day in front of it as well, okay? G'day, how's it going? All right, guys, amazing work. That is it for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining me. I am your host, Pete, and this is another episode of Aussie English. Don't forget to check out the playlist of all of the different Aussie English pronunciation and phrase breakdowns that I've done. I'll leave that up here for you. If you want the worksheet for this episode with all the phrases that we've gone through, all of the pronunciation tips and tricks, the IPA, everything like that, you can download that below. And as I said at the start, my number one tip for learning the Australian accent is to check out my Australian pronunciation course. You'll learn all of the different consonant and vowel sounds in Australian English. And then there are 26 different advanced lessons on things like the Aussie R sound, the Aussie syllabic N and L, and the Aussie dark L. So it's a great course to get if that is your goal, to sound more like an Australian when speaking English. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this with someone who you think will enjoy it. And until next week, I'll see you later. Taroo!